All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world eagerly calls God. And Yahweh Shai is his beloved Son, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ. Those are the true names to whom we worship, to whom we call upon in the Lashwan Kadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that have taught me this truth that's constant ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai. Shalom to the Bakarium, to the elect brethren that's constantly pushing this word in truth and sincerity that's not wavering to the left nor to the right, but constantly staying on that straight and narrow fighting for your crowns. Uh, Shalom to the Israelite foreigners, those that may look like the other nations, but their seed line goes back into our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom to the few Aquafs, the few sisters that are out there. And as always, we got to give honor and glory to those holy names, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, for opening our minds, giving us this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in the last days that we are truly living in. Um, and I want to do this lesson because um, recently in the news over the weekend, you had the um, Andrew Jackson statue in uh, Lafayette Park um, be vandalized, okay? And as you see this picture in the Yahoo News, it says the words expect us are spray painted on the base of the Andrew Jackson statue in Lafayette Park as indigenous and environmental activists protest in front of the White House in Washington, Monday, October 11, 2021. All right. Now, Andrew Jackson, being one of many devils, okay, the nation of Edom, put major hell on the children of Israel. All right. And primarily, we're speaking on the children of Gad, all right, and the children of Reuben, okay, the North American Indians and the Seminole, Seminole Indians, which are what they are called um, today, all right, but they are the sons of Jacob, okay. Now, I want to read just a little bit into some of that brief history because it involves in the um, lives being lost, all right, the genocide of our people okay walking the trail of tears okay and them being colonized okay forced in to the american ways so now right here this is president george washington believed that the best way to solve this indian problem was simply to civilize the the native americans the goal of this civilization campaign was to make Native Americans as much like white Americans as possible by encouraging them to convert to Christianity, learn to speak and read English, and adopt European-style economics, practice such as the individual ownership of land and other property, including in some instance in the South African slaves. Southerners uh, United States, many Chacataws, Chickasaws, Seminole, Creeks, and Cherokee people embraced these customs and became known as the five civilized tribes. All right. And it was prophesied through the scriptures. Let's get this real fast. Genesis 49 and 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and gathered yourself together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, and the ex excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Now, when you jump down, you know, Jacob was speaking unto his sons, all right, that was going to befall them, all right, in the last day, because Jacob, our forefather Jacob, was a prophet, okay? So he prophesied that the Europeans were going to uh, have the power, the strength, all right, the might to be able to take down his son in the last days. OK, so this is Genesis 49 and 19. It says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him. OK, but he shall overcome at the last. All right. So that troop overcame Gad. OK, which was the European settlers. 
that wanted the land that pushed Gad out of their territories, all right? After Gad did nothing but show kindness, okay, and, and mercy unto the children of Edom, all right? Showed them how to um, hunt, showed them how to cultivate the land, showed them how to um, use every piece and part of the animal, leaving nothing to waste, all right? Showed them uh, uh, mercy and compassion, but what it, but what was met with Gad? Cruelty, all right? Um, every covenant that was created against the European settlers, all right, which were the Edomites, all right, and the children of Israel, all right, the Gadites, all right, um, not one peace treaty was upheld. Not one contract made between both parties were upheld, all right? The, the Gadites and the Seminole Indians did their part, but dealing with Esau, okay, him being a devil, he did what? Conquer, all right, lied, all right, had double standards. And that's why the scriptures say, let's get this real fast, okay? His words, smoother than butter. Let me see. I'm gonna type in wars in his heart. Here it is. This is Psalm chapter 55, verse 21. It says, The word of his mouth was smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Okay. So he smoked peace. He smoke he spoke. Um matter of fact, let me read up. Psalms 55 and 20. He have put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He have broken his covenant. Every covenant that the Edomite man um, made with the children of Israel. All right. He has broken every single last covenant. Okay. It says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Okay. In the Salakia and the children of Israel suffered at the hands, right, of the of the Edomite man, all right? And the Lord was with this man to overpower um, the children of uh, uh, Gad and Reuben, okay, in order for prophecy to be fulfilled, all right? Now, the times that we're living in, okay, dealing with the statue, expect us. The prophecy is that Gad was overcome with a troop, but he shall overcome in the end, okay? Because, let's get it over here in um, um, Isaiah, okay? Isaiah chapter, let me see, 33 and 1. It says, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled. And dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, and thou shalt and thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. All right. So in the end, the children of Gad, all right, the children of Reuben, okay, are gonna be the ones that are gonna spoil. All right, the the the, the sons, all right, and the daughters of Edom. Okay, this is prophesied to come. Expect us. Okay, all right. And we're living in the days where Yahweh Bashem Shai has raised up the remnant. All right, okay. And the remnant are going to be the ones who are going to be given power to subdue. All right, the children of Edom. All right, the nation of Edom. Okay, so let's read back more into Andrew Jackson. Okay, one of many devils that have put hell upon the children of Israel okay so um, let me read right here so you get understanding what happened it says the state governments joined in this effort to drive Native Americans out of the s s uh, south several states passed laws limiting Native American sovereignty and rights and, and encroaching 
um, on their territory. In Worcester versus Georgia in 1832, the U.S. Supreme Court objected to these practices and affirmed the native nations were sovereign nations in which the laws of Georgia and other states had can have no force. Even so, the maltreatment continued as President Andrew Jackson noted in 1832, if no one intended to enforce the Supreme Court's ruling, which he certainly did not, then the decision would, fit, would fall. Stillborn southern states were determined to take ownership of Indian lands and would go to great lengths to secure this territory, which brought up what the Indian Removal Act okay Andrew Jackson had long been an advocate of what he called the Indian Removal as an army general he had spent years leading brutal campaigns against the Creeks in Georgia and Alabama and the Seminoles in Florida campaigns that resulted in the transfer of hundreds of thousands of acres of land from Indian nations to white farmers as president he continued this crusade in 1830. He signed the Indian Removal Act, which gave the federal government the power to exchange native held lands in the Cotton Kingdom east of the Mississippi for land to the west in the Indian colonization zone that the United States had acquired as part of the Louisiana Purchase. This Indian territory was located in present day Oklahoma. OK, let's go over here to. The book of Micah. All right. Micah chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Even the morning is light, they practice it because it is in their it is in the power of their hands, and they covet fields and take them by violence, and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, and even a man and his heritage. Okay, so they had the power to enforce these laws, and they went to great lengths and to remove them from their lands in order for what? For them to gain profit, all right? For them to also for force um uh back back breaking and, and 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 you know hard work on also the, the the southern kingdom all right which deals with the tribe of judah benjamin and levi okay um for them to work on them plantations okay because what they had the power to do it and they did it what all by violence okay so in the end Yahweh by Shemel Shai said, um, since they have shown no mercy, they shall receive no mercy. Okay, so the Lord is going to raise up his people in the last days, okay, to overcome those that overcame them because we are oppressed underneath the Edomite man as of today. All right, but Yahweh by Shemel Shai is about to lift us up and raise us on high and change us from our current estate. Okay, to where we're going to possess that power to inflict punishment back on our enemies. Okay, as they did unto us. Okay, rightfully so. Okay, scriptures speak about an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. All right, um, what a man sow, he shall reap. The devil is getting ready to reap what he has sown in the planet Earth. Okay, so let's read back more into some of this history it says the law required the government to negotiate removal treated fairly voluntary and peacefully it did not permit the president or anyone else to co coerce native nations into giving up their land however president jackson and his government frequently ignored the letter of the law and forced native americans to vacate lands they had lived on for generations in the winter of 1831, under threat of invasion by the U.S. Army, the Choctaw became the first nation to be expelled from its land altogether. They made the journey to Indian Territory on foot, some bound in chains, and, mer and marched double filed. One histor historian writes, and, and without any food, supplies, 
other help from the government thousand people died along the way it was the one chickata leader told an alabama newspaper a trail of tears and death okay so this is history that we went through by right? our people okay and so the lord is going to stir up that spirit within us okay to get busy on these devils all right the Lord is going to give us power, okay, to give vengeance. And there's nothing wrong with that. The scriptures say that the 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 the, the, the uh, vengeance is in the Lord's heart, all right, in his return, okay, because he has seen the atrocity of what was done to his people, okay. And the Lord is going to allow us to do what they have done unto us. They, they, they binded us. They put us in slavery. They put chains upon us, all right. They killed our children. Our, 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 our old, our young died in the midst of uh, long distance traveling, harsh and cold, in harsh and cold weathers, okay? That was hell, all right? So, the Lord, that was a spiritual sign, that statue, okay? Let's, let's go back to it, that statue, all right? Expect us, okay? Expect us, okay? Because Yahweh Bashem El Shai is going to raise up his people in the last days, okay? And this is, let's, matter of fact, let's look up the word expect, all right, in the, long, in the online etymology. Let's look up the word expect, okay? Let's see what that, let's see what that says. Expect. The word expect means to wait, defer action, to look out for, okay? So this is what you devils better look out for, all right? Because it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass, all right? And we're living in a time to where Babylon the Great is fallen. You devils don't have that much longer, okay? In your time of rulership, all right? Let's go over here real fast. Let's go to my highlights. Um... Let's go over to the book of Habakkuk. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5. It says, Yeah. Matter of fact, let me start at verse 4. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. We know this is speaking about the Edomite man. There's not one good Edomite on the planet Earth. Okay? The self proclaimed white man. There's not one good white man on the planet Earth. Okay? Not one good white woman. Not one good white man. All right? But the just shall live by by his faith. All right, that's the children of Israel. Well, this is how we live. We live by faith. Okay, it says, "Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say?" Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? All right. And the scriptures say, not long. Seeing that his days are determined, he shall not be able to pass his bounds. All right. He was only set to rule for a particular time. Okay. And as it gets close to the end, all right, we were going to see his downfall and we're seeing it. Okay. We don't have that much longer here in America. Yahweh Bashem is about to liberate us. He's about to lift us up again. He's about to raise us back on high. Okay. He's going to change us. Okay. He's going to give us power back again. And to him that laid himself with thick clay. All right. America right now is heavily in debt. Okay. America is on a decline. America is a sinking ship. Okay. That is never going to rise again once it be fully and utterly destroyed. All right. It says, verse seven, shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shall be for booties unto them. All right. America is going to be for spoil. All right. The kings of the earth that are ruling Ohio are going to be for a spoil. OK. And everything that they have is going to be taken. 
because whatever a nation and an army comes in and subdues they take what the other nation has okay the riches the land okay the people all right the women okay are all going to be for booties unto the children of israel all right it says because thou hast spoiled many nations all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein all right because of these actions that were committed against the lord's chosen people all right the violence that you put your hands to the lord to, to the apple of the lord's eye okay and spilled man's blood unjustfully okay those that have been at peace with thee you slaughtered you murdered them you you forced them into to harsh labors okay you went overboard in your violence okay you're gonna go down in a heavy manner all right when you have a shot returns with the heavenly host okay you have to pay for the things that you have done let's go over here to my next scripture highlights this is um Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 12 it says for thus saith the Lord behold they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken okay and what is that cup that cup represents the slavery that we drunk okay that we suffered we went through our portion of slavery okay we drunken of that cup and now the scriptures say that let's go let's get it real fast let's get it real fast in lab in lamentations okay since we have drunken of that cup since we have drunken of that cup now it is coming to an end it is being accomplished a serving our captivity here this is lamentations 4 and 21 rejoice and be glad O daughter of edom that dwelleth in the land of us the cup also shall pass through unto thee thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished O daughter of zion all right all time of being in captivity and in punishment is at its end all right we're at the final moments of us getting out of this hellhole it says he will no more carry thee away into captivity he will visit thine iniquity O daughter of edom he will discover thy sins all right and all the evil atrocities in history that was buried and hidden is now coming to the forefront okay all right the words you help us smell child traveling across this globe okay the light is shining forth on the wicked one okay let's read back in jeremiah 49 and 12 it says for thus have the lord behold thy they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished thou shalt not go unpunished but thou shalt surely drink of it all right the lord said thou shalt surely drink of it all right as, as the statue stated expect us okay for i have sworn by myself said the lord that basra shall become a desolation america is going to be destroyed okay a reproach a waste and a curse in all the cities thereof shall be a perpetual waste i have heard a rumor from the lord an ambassador is sent unto the heathen saying gather ye together and come against her and rise up to the battle for lo i will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men thy terribleness have deceived thee and the pride of thine heart o thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks all right thou holdest the height of the hills though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle i will bring thee down from thence saith the lord so the lord is about to bring down the pride of edom all right the lord is about to break the staff of the wicked okay he's gonna cut this man from his rulership okay and he's gonna allow his people to do so also edom shall be a desolation 
everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof because what's going to happen to you Edomites you're going to go into slavery okay you're going to rock iron metal around your neck your children your woman you're going to be enslaved by the children of Israel it say he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword Okay. Matter of fact, let me grab that real fast. So, Odie, but goody. Okay. This is the faith and the patience of the saints. This is Revelation chapter 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints, okay? As you have done these things, these things shall be done unto you, all right? It says, uh, Jeremiah 49 and 18, as in, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah in the neighbor cities thereof, Except the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it, because America's destined to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. As the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, Yahweh Shemashai is going to use the other nation as Yahweh comes back to gather the remnant and subdue all nations. Okay? He's going to make this place be utterly destroyed by fire. That nobody's going to be able to dwell in this land anymore. All right. And America's days shall not be prolonged longer than the Lord established it to be. And we're in a time where this place is about to fall and be utterly beaten down into powder. So I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Abishai, the bonus to my apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, salutations, peace, mercy, and blessings to the hope members of the elect. And I pray this lesson was edifying. With that, I want to say, Shalom.